Nicole Fecto. I am the chairman of the Berwick Planning Board. I've been a member for about eight years now and chairman just since January, so eight months. Eight years, eight months. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on right now in the planning board, as well as uh, just go over some land use ordinance things for you. So our last meeting was August 19th. We had three orders of new business on the meeting. We had a site plan amendment for the adult use marijuana cultivation facility at 11 Pond Road. We actually wound up tabling that because we did not have a quorum due to the applicant asking a few of my board members to recuse themselves. We then had a lot line adjustment for um, the property at 569 Portland Street, which is Route 4 Self Storage and HP Cycles. They got their lot line adjustment. We also had a, a nice conversation about building within setback lines in the town of Berwick. That has been a problem lately. I guess it's been a problem for a while, but just lately it's really come to light. And we're talking about different fines and different ways to make it a little bit more painful if somebody makes a mistake and builds within a setback. And just for just so you know, a setback is, uh, depending on which zone you're in, there are certain there are certain distances from your side lines, your front lines, and your rear lines that you need to keep. And so it, it looks like lines on a piece of paper, and you need to build your house within this. Um, and some people have been building them outside of that and within the the area where you're not supposed to be building. So uh, we had a good discussion about that. But the biggest thing that we saw was a um, sketch plan for a major subdivision. And this subdivision is on Pine Hill Road. It is known as the Morrill Farm property. It sold on uh, a November 20th, 2020. And the developer has just come in with a 26 lot subdivision proposal. And we will put up on the screen a map of the proposal so you can kind of get an idea of that and we had some great conversation about it so you know a sketch plan meeting so when you have a major subdivision we have a couple of different meetings the sketch plan meeting is meeting number one it's solely for informational purposes the developer comes in and says hey this is what we want to do it's not even their application meeting yet so we have a discussion, we send them on their way. Their second meeting is an application meeting where we look at their full application to see if they've met all of our criteria to start the actual process. The third meeting is then what we call the first meeting, which doesn't really make much sense. But that's the meeting where we normally have a public hearing. We have um, a site walk usually on that meeting. We really start ironing things out on that meeting. And so it's the third meeting, which we call the first meeting, where the public can actually get up, ask questions, and, and have a uh, conversation with the board, more or less. So I just want to talk a little bit about major subdivision. What we uh, wound up doing as a board was asking this developer to go back to the drawing board and come back to us with a sketch plan for a cluster development. It's one of the few times that the planning board can flex their muscles and require something else of a developer totally different than what they came to us with. Because this is prime farmland and because it's a uh, very important open space in our community, we want to offer the developer smaller lot sizes, so less than the, I think it's 20,000 square feet is the minimum lot size in the R2 zone, I believe. Yes, half an acre. Um, so we're gonna ask them to uh, allow them to have a smaller lot size in exchange for preserving 30% of the open space. So the lot is about 42 acres. We're asking them to preserve 30% of that, which is about 12 acres. and in turn, we're going to allow them to have smaller lot sizes. You can find out more about this by Googling the Berwick Land Use Ordinance. And uh, it's right online. It's very easy to find. Pages 87 through 91 talks all about it. So that's one thing that we've required of them. And that's going to help to preserve the rural character of town, which is what we've really identified we want to do through our comprehensive plan. The other thing I wanted to talk about for major subdivisions is some of the some of the hot button topics so so everybody knows this subdivision and all major subdivisions need to go through the um, EPA so the the environmental or DEP De Department of Environmental Protection has to review this they're going to make sure that wetlands are delineated and there are special setbacks for wetlands they're going to make sure that if there's a spotted salamander it's protected if there's a vernal pool it's protected so we don't have to as a board worry about that part 
The other hot button topic, hot button topic for the um, subdivisions is schools. So we know that our schools are at a high capacity right now, and one of the um, one of the items on the final plan that they must have, and I'm just going to read, and this is in the subdivision regulations, so it's different than land use ordinance, this is subdivision regulations, 8.1.J says the board shall notify the road commissioner, the school superintendent, police chief, and fire chief of the proposed subdivision, number of dwelling units, length of roadways, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the board shall request that these officials comment upon the adequacy of their department's existing capital facilities to service the proposed subdivision. That's really important. So that means that the superintendent of schools has to write us a letter telling us about their ability to, um, to service the proposed subdivision. And so that helps us get information directly from the source and not through hearsay about how the subdivision is going to impact the schools. So those are the few little things I wanted to comment on right now. I do wanna also mention, like I said, although we have a public comment session at the beginning and the end of each one of our board meetings, anything that is active on our agenda, we cannot accept comments about um, during those public comment sessions. The only time that we can have a public comment on an active agenda item is during the public hearing. So I try to keep everybody really informed about those. And um, you'll, if you're in a butter, you'll get notified in the mail about that. So um, that's when you can come in and make a comment. And the public comment or public hearing is just that. We hear what you have to say. We hear your comments. We take them down. It is not an active discussion between the board and the public, and it's not an active discussion between the developer and the public. It's simply you stand up, you have three minutes if you need it to say whatever you want to say to us. We write it down, um, we contemplate it, and we ask the right questions of the developer later. But that's it. Um, if you have any questions or comments or concerns about anything, including the subdivision, you can reach out to James Bellissimo, our town planner, at planning at borroughmain.org, and he can, um, he can relay any information to the board as well. That's all I got for you. <laughs> mm -hmm.